Apple scab is a critically important disease of apple that's prevalent in human regions where apples are grown. Apple orchards in the Midwestern and Eastern United States and in comparable regions of Canada are vulnerable to scab infection every year. The scab fungus mainly infects apple leaves and fruit. Green tissue on trees is susceptible to scab as soon as it emerges. Fruit infection is the most significant issue with scab, of course, as fruit with scab lesions can't be sold in the fresh market. Extensive scab infection on leaves can, cause, can also cause major problems to trees through issues associated with early defoliation. As I just stated, scab infection can occur on this green tissue as soon as it's present on trees. Now these trees have just broken dormancy and this tissue is susceptible to scab infection. Scab inoculum is present on the orchard floor in infected leaves from the previous season. The fungus produces fruiting bodies in those leaves called pseudothesia that when they're mature, those spores are forcibly ejected following wetting events. Once ejected then, those primary ascospores have the possibility of finding their way to the tree and infecting this tissue. Now it's usually cool to cold at this early time of the season and in a typical season only a low percentage of primary ascospores are disseminated at this time. Also, as obviously you can see, the area of tissue present that can be infected is quite small. Thus the chances of infection are low at this time. Notice I didn't say zero but I said low. This green tip timing is actually a very critical timing for us to protect trees from scab. If you want to keep your scab season under control, it's absolutely necessary to have your first fungicide application on before the first apple scab infection period at green tip. This is because if trees are infected at green tip, those lesions will grow and they'll produce secondary spores. And those spores, called conidia, will typically be ready to be released, usually between pink and petal fall. Now this is significant to your overall scab headache for many reasons. First, the pink to petal fall timing is usually the typical timing when the maximum number of ascospores are coming up from the leaves on the ground. Combine that with spores coming from lesions on leaves and you would likely have a significantly high scab inoculum problem. It's always much more difficult to control scab under high inoculum pressure than under low inoculum conditions. Second, any scab lesions that occur on leaves in the tree, those will produce significant numbers of conidia. If you sustain an infection at green tip, these lesions may be producing more spores on the tree than that would be coming up from the ground. Again, a nightmarish situation for control. And you think about it, it's much easier for spores present from lesions in the tree to find other leaves, other surfaces in the tree, than it is for the spores coming from the ground to find those targets in the tree. So the, the fungus is much more readily disseminated from within the tree than on the ground. So finally, the pink to petal fall timing is difficult enough for scab control without lesions in the trees. Besides the usual peak for spore release from overwintering inoculum on the ground, this is a period of rapid growth on the tree, leaf expansion that will leave surfaces unprotected from fungicides as they grow during your spray interval. Scab spores will find this unprotected tissue. This timing can also result in fruit infections. I hope that I've convinced you that protection of your trees at this early timing of development in the spring is absolutely the first positive step to a successful scab management season.